I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is the eighth installment of our Mega Arms Ma 10 build. We're here today to install the final component on our build, and that is the Surefire SOCOM muzzle brake. Now the reason that we chose the Surefire SOCOM muzzle brake is because we really wanted to set up this system more along the lines of law enforcement sniper rifle or designated marksman rifle, and we wanted to give the shooter the ability to attach a suppressor later on. The Surefire SOCOM muzzle brake is excellent in the fact that it is already designed to be able to accept a Surefire SOCOM suppressor. But if you're in a situation where either you can't afford a suppressor right now or your legal environment doesn't allow you to purchase a suppressor, you can install this brake, you can reap the recoil reduction benefits of a two-chamber brake, and then later on when you're able to afford or legally able to purchase a suppressor, you can just simply throw a suppressor on it without changing anything else on the weapon system. Now there are things you can do once you install a suppressor to fine tune the weapon system to that suppressor, but that's really out of the scope of this build right now. Now the Surefire SOCOM muzzle brake comes in several different uh, threaded varieties. So you can get this brake for 223s, you can get it for uh, metric threaded barrels, etc. So you want to make sure that you purchase the correct brake for your barrel. In this case, we purchased the 5 8 and 24 TPI threaded brake. 5 8 inch, 24 threads per inch is pretty much standard for 308 barrels, but if you live outside the US, then you make sure you want to check because there are metric threaded barrels that this particular brake will not attach to. Now if you have something like an Accuracy International where the barrel was threaded from the UK factory, then it will probably have metric threads on it and if you want to put one of these on one of those barrels, make sure you get the correct one. Now Surefire was great in the fact that they pretty much packaged everything that you need to install this brake in one kit. As well as the brake, the kit comes with a shim kit and a little tube of rock set. These are generally added expenses when you purchase other muzzle devices. The shim kit is the quickest and easiest way to install a muzzle brake on your rifle and make sure that it's timed correctly. Now when I say timed correctly, what I mean is when you screw a muzzle device on, there is a slim chance that the top of the muzzle device is going to line up perfectly with the top of the rifle when you get it torqued to its correct torque spec. Usually it will be cocked off to one side or the other or maybe even completely upside down. So you need to do something to be able to get that brake to torque down perfectly aligned with the top of the rifle. Now, you could, of course, put the barrel in a lathe and cut the barrel shoulder back incrementally until it lines up perfectly. If you were in a custom rifle shop, that's probably what you would do. You wouldn't resort to shims. Another option is to take a piece of emery cloth, lay it on a glass plate, and then sand the bottom of the brake until, when you screw it on by trial and error, it lines up. Both of those are time consuming and really not the best thing for the home user to do. Uh, the shim kit is great because what you just simply do is select the correct number of shims to screw the barrel on to allow it to index just shy of perfectly lined up with the top of the rifle. And then when you torque it down, it should crush those last couple of thousands and line up perfectly. Now previously, on other muzzle devices when I've done this, it's been a trial and error. I'll just take a shim, put it on, screw the, bear, or screw the muzzle device down, take it off, put another shim on, etc., until it lines up where I want it to be. Again, this is time consuming. Uh, it's kind of, uh, it'll irritate you because sometimes you get it to line up, you'll throw the next one on and it'll be passed. Well, Surefire has solved this problem. Um, as always, when you're installing things on rifles, Read the manual. Surefire included this nifty little manual that besides telling you the torque values, uh, it also has what are called timing wheel diagrams in here. And it's just a circle with different degree marks lined out on it. But in those degree marks, it tells you what the correct shims are for that degree. So we're gonna go ahead and take our muzzle brake and we're gonna just screw it on our barrel here, making sure that we don't cross thread it. And we'll screw it all the way down until the shoulder of the brake contacts the shoulder of the barrel. Now we just snug it down hand tight and we see we lucked out on this brake. It is almost perfectly aligned with the top of the rifle. I can tell by looking at that when I go and torque this down, it is going to come up 
perfectly, and I don't need to use any shims. This is the best possible solution because you really want to use the least number of shims possible, and if the least number of shims is zero, you're good to go. But let's say, for the sake of argument, that we stopped it and it was lined up like that. Well, what we would need to do is take a look, sighting down the front of the barrel, and see how many degrees off this is going to be. We then grab our nifty little timing wheel here. We make sure we're on the page for 24 threads per inch, which correspond with this break. And we can see that about that angle, we would need a red shim and a no color shim to line up. So we would come in here, we would take out the red shim, we would take out the no collar shim, or no color shim. We would back the brake totally off, throw those shims on over the threaded portion of the barrel, screw it back on, and then snug it down. And we should come up right about where we're at now with those shims installed. Once you get that, we are now going to have to torque the muzzle device down to 20 to 35 foot-pounds of torque. Now make sure you understand that's foot-pounds, not inch-pounds. That is the correct torque rating for this muzzle device. Now torque ratings on muzzle devices are something that you have to understand. Uh, you definitely do not want to over torque a muzzle device onto your barrel because you can cause damage to the threads, you can cause damage to the muzzle device, and more importantly, you can damage the accuracy of the rifle. If you start stretching it out and deforming that last little bit of barrel, that's the last thing the bullet touches as it goes down range. So if you stretch that out and you deform it, you can really harm the accuracy of your rifle. So when you're torquing muzzle devices onto the rifle, less torque is better. So the least amount of torque you need to hold it on is better. That's one of the reasons I really like this rock set is because we can use less torque. Once we get everything dry fitted up, we test fire the rifle, we can back the muzzle device back off, we can glue it on with the rock set, and we can be good to go. Now the reason I'm not gluing it on with the rock set right now is because we have not test fired this rifle yet. We haven't made sure that the gas system is good to go. We haven't seen that there are no problems with the way the barrel's mounted. If I need to pull this barrel off later on, I don't want to have this muzzle device glued on here. So I will leave the rock set off of it for now until after we test fire, then we'll back it off. We'll just put a drop of lock set on and then torque the muzzle device back on. Now once you get to this part, you're going to need either an armorer's wrench that has the appropriate sized flat cut into it, and this is a DPMS armorer's wrench, and it is a very good high quality wrench. Uh, I have used this for countless numbers of AR-15s, so it's a really good tool to have around the shop. Uh, it has a cutout in it to be able to attach a torque wrench to the armorer's wrench and get the appropriate torque rating. So we'll also need a foot-pounds torque wrench that's capable of a 20 to 35 foot-pound range and the appropriate adapter to be able to hook it into the armorer's wrench. But if you don't have either of those, you can get away with just a crescent wrench. We're talking about 20 to 35 foot-pounds of torque, and it's a pretty broad torque range that you need to hit. So you can take one of these, adjust it down correctly, and just bump it until it's snug. We're not trying to gorilla grip it. We're not trying to throw a cheater bar on here and lock it down, just until it's snug. Now you need to make sure that you take into account the added length that the armor's wrench is adding to your torque wrench. That way, when you lock this down, you're not over torquing it. Now, when I did the calculation for the added length of my armor's wrench, it only came up to 18 to 34 foot-pounds, I think, so I still have a broad range to hit. I can still set my torque wrench to 20 foot-pounds and be in there. But in this case, we are going to set it at 18, and we're going to go ahead and throw it on here and torque this baby down. And there we go. That's all it took. You notice it was not a massive amount of torque. We even left it on the bipod. I have a vice block behind me, which I would recommend you use, but we really didn't want to break the camera setup down and set it back up on the vice block just for that couple of seconds. So that's all it takes to torque it down. We are now good to go. We are now ready 
to take our Mega Arms Ma 10 out to the field and test fire it. That's all there is. No big deal to installing this brake. It is easy as pie. Now, if you have a system where you're running a 14 and a half inch barrel and you need the length of the brake to bring it up to a legal 16 inches without registering your rifles in SBR, the Surefire brake does come set up with uh, pilot holes drilled so you can drill in and pin the brake, but I would highly suggest if you're going to do that, take it to a qualified gunsmith and have them do it because the last thing you want to do is run a drill bit into your rifling and really screw up the accuracy of your rifle. So that is the muzzle brake installation on our Mega Arms Ma 10 build. If you've liked this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of the Mega Arms Ma 10 build. Until next time, get out and shoot! <laughs>